me ask you this though. Had I given you some objections, right? So like you have a prospective client. You, you give have... me any objection, I'll yeah. shut it down. I spit raps like a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impacts. Past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and pass I back up my What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the School of Hard Knocks podcast. I'm James. I'm here with Jack and Josh. And we're out in Scottsdale with an amazing guest, Andy Elliott. We're out at his headquarters. He is the sales mogul and one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the entire game. And, you know, before we get into some questions, if you could kind of give us a little background, introduction to yourself for those that don't know. Yeah, so um, number one, when I was two years old, my mom left me, which means that you guys literally can have the most broken, jacked up, crazy life. And you could think that, man, you know, people like me don't make it. That's all a lie. Mom left when I was two, five brothers and sisters, Jerry Springer show, had no curfew my whole life, um, 18 years old, barely graduated high school. I was going to fail. Um, I had straight D's. A tornado wiped my school out because I was in Oklahoma. And they said if you had passing grades, then you just got to pass. So I was like, dude, I only got to take semester tests. Cool. I don't have to redo 12th grade. I graduated. Went and did construction for one month. That sucked. That was awful. Literally got paid 200 bucks a week to clean up tornado damage. Did that for one month. And then my buddy's best friend or my best friend's, his older brother says, I'll give you a job in sales and you can make five grand a month. And obviously, like I've never had more than $5 in my hand at a time. Um, my whole life, I was raised poor and I just, you know, like the, the idea of us having money or anything, my dad bought me a truck when I was 16 years old. He paid $400 cash for it. And I remember watching him hand the guy four $100 bills. And I go, dad, where'd you get all that money from, dude? And he's like, tax income. You know, I got my, my tax refund. And so I'm buying you a truck. And it was the ugliest truck you've ever seen. But dude, the fact that we didn't have to walk, that was the most amazing beat up 72 Chevy three on the tree. It had a rusted floorboard. Your feet, you could see the ground as you were driving. But that was like, we didn't have much money growing up. Well, anyways, um, I started in sales. First day, made $1,700. Um, that day, life changed. I told you the story a minute ago. Once you realize that you can find something and then that's your way out, then you just pursue it heavily. Now you're figuring out, hey, how can I be the top 1% in the industry in sales? And I remember asking this, and this is important. What is the top 1% in industry in this in this business pay. And I was in automotive sales and I'm 18 years old. And the guy goes, well, the very top, top 1% in this industry pay about a hundred grand. I once knew a guy that made 120,000. Well, by the time I was 20, the next two years I studied, I trained, I practiced. I was remember listening to Grant Cardone cassette tapes while everybody else was bullshit drinking coffee. I was out on the golf, golf cart when I didn't have a customer listening to cassette tapes, writing down stuff on spiral notebooks. This is 25 years ago. And, um, I was making 500 grand a year by the time I was 20, made about 800 grand by the time I was 22, 23. And I just realized that the fastest way to kill it in life and to do really well is in sales. Now, I'm going to fast forward to today's market. It's insane. We're in the era of the worst salesperson in the history of time. If you can become great at sales, you literally can become rich overnight. If you can become great at being a leader, you can become rich overnight because we're in a shortage of leadership and we're short of sales. And families and businesses and companies and the whole world are looking for freaking leaders right now. They're starving for them. So about 24, I got into leadership. And then I was like, the way that you get paid is you get paid 20% on your own or you get paid 2% of all the store. Does that make sense? So now you got all these salespeople, which means you don't get paid anything if all of them don't perform. So I start training all of them, and I realize that I, the better that they became, the more money they made, the more money I made, but also the better I felt about helping other people become better and start making more money. So I fell in love with like teaching. So through my 20s and my, and my 30s, you know, I never really thought about owning my own business. I worked my, myself up to making about $2.5 million um, as a GM. I was leading stores. I was doing great, which is very, very good in the automotive space. A lot of people, what I learned, my wife told me this for a long time. She goes, dude, you have so much more in you, and you just, you're just not going for it. Honestly, dude, I was scared. You know, I mean, I stayed in one industry my whole life. What does that mean? That would mean that, that I was the lion of that, that territory. That was my place. And dude, like, instead of thinking I could go big in the world and change the whole world's lives or do anything like that, like, I really wasn't involved in, like, this entrepreneur game that you guys are in now. And I'm going to tell you this. At 39 years old, okay, 2019, I'm 44 today, 2019, I woke up. And I started watching some videos on YouTube. I started watching the way that people can evolve. And I was like, dude, 
I want to be like that. And I, and I did, and I decided to recreate myself again. And I decided to become a person that I'd never been my whole life. I started caring about people at a way higher level. I wanted to be an example for others. And dude, there's just a time where you get sick, sick and tired of being sick and tired and you decide to bet the farm and go all in. That's what I did. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. We built the Elliott Group, we opened a sales training company, and then it turned into a leadership company, and then it even added into a fitness program, and now it sells leadership and fitness. And dude, we have swept, we started out automotive, and we have set, swept every industry from real estate to solar, to, to pest control, to alarms, to I don't care what you do, if you speak, if you talk, if you influence, if you persuade, you paint pictures, you tell stories, if you communicate for a living, which is what a closer is, which is a master communicator, we, we, we train people. And dude, we've blown it up to a nine figure plus business and I have a great team, we have a great company, we're in Scottsdale, Arizona and my best friends are some of the greatest influencers that live on planet earth right now and I'm brothers with all these guys and I remember I started watching these guys in the beginning. I remember watching Andy Frizzella in 2019 and I was like, dude, like one day, I remember watching Patrick Bet David and I was like, man, you know, like one day I want to shake his hand. These guys are my bro bros now. They're my brothers. They're my, I remember Brad Lee when I started first started watching Brad Lee. I was like, dude, dude, me and Brad Lee, we just went on vacation for a week. We're going on another one two weeks from now. Our families are best friends. Our friends are, our, our kids are all best friends. It's like, dude, what happens when you wake the fuck up is the whole world changes. And I'm going to tell you what changed my lens, my eyes, the way I stall stuff changed. So my story is I got in sales, I was broke. And what I've learned is that people that come from nothing can end up with the most. Usually people crave what they can't get as a kid. They crave it as an adult. I wanted love. I didn't get a lot of that as a kid. Now as an adult, I just love being around people. I love being around loving people. You walk by a lot of guys in my company, they're all giving you a pound, giving you a hug, they're giving you a fist bump. That's the way they roll, man. You know, you don't have to be hard. You don't have to be a dick to make it. You can actually be really cool, be super awesome and be loving. You know what I mean? So you can, uh, you can build your own culture. You guys can build your own life. You can create whatever you want. And really nobody can stop you, man. So... I want to kind of go back to that initial moment in sales when you're starting out in the business at 18. I know that you said that your first day that you had sold $1,800, you know, you made $1,800 your first day. What was that initial moment of success that you had when you realized that I'm going to go all in on sales and become the top 1%, become the best in the world at it? Well, the deal is I didn't, well, so like first you got to realize that like you even can be qualified for that life, right? Does that make sense? Dude, I remember, and I, and I know this sounds crazy, but I remembered walking into a, a church when I was a junior in high school and I was really lost and I never went to church and no one ever took me to church, but I walked into church and I had holy jeans and I remember this lady goes, can I help you? And I said, I'm going to church or here for church, right? Like I'm going to watch the church. And she's like, mm, I don't know. Are you, are you sure you're in the right church? And I was like, okay, I'm getting out of here. Like I didn't feel welcome. Does that make sense? Like, like it, that's not how, that's not what church is supposed to be about, right? So I felt I felt broken, I felt poor, I felt unwanted, I felt betrayed. I was pissed off at fucking everybody. I felt like, you know, like I, like you're just embarrassed. Like you know, I remember asking my dad, I'm like, hey, can I go to this you know amusement park? My friends are going. I need five dollars. He's like, dude, you know we ain't got five dollars. So when my friends would go to the front and pay to get in, I would jump the fence on the backside, barbed wire fence, and get in. Like, dude, it's just a, a stream of embarrassing things my whole life. And I'm, and listen, dude, like, lots of people have it way worse than that. But you know how you just, like, wanted what they had. I remember my buddies had new cars. They all shit. Man, I didn't have any of that. I remember the way that they would look at me. I remember I would go hang out with my friends for the weekend. The parents would be like, hey, all the kids are chipping in money because you're we're at the lake. And I was like, well, I, I don't have any money. And they're like, your dad didn't give you any money to pitch in? I'm like, dude, we don't have any money. I mean, I, I rode in the back of the truck to get here. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like I was just a leech. Does that make sense? Like, I wasn't wanted. Nobody wanted me around. I wanted to make fucking money. I was sick of being the bum. I was sick of being the third wheel that people look at. I was sick of not being able to get my, what I wanted. And I didn't even know what I wanted. I just was so freaking sick of literally being embarrassed. 
And, you know, hey, listen, my dad's a great guy. Okay, my mom's a piece of shit. I needed to be the one that woke the fuck up, made something happen in my life. I just didn't know where the hell it could happen from. And honestly, at this point, there was nobody inspiring me to make anything happen. So when I tripped up that second and I made that $1,700 commission, I asked my manager, I go, is this real? Like, can you really make this kind of money? And at that point, he educated me. He goes, listen, dude, if you'll be coachable, and this is actually what he told me, he goes, if you'll be coachable, if you'll learn, if you, he goes, dude, Andy, you can't even look in my eyes while we're talking. He's like, you don't have to shake my hand. He's like, dude, you stutter when you talk. He's like, you're so far away. But if you can learn and you can out self-develop, see all these other guys, if you can out self-develop them, like, dude, like, you, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm like, are you telling me the truth? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm going to work seven days a week. You're going to pick me up at 7 a.m. in the morning, and I'm going to stay here till they shut the gate at night. And you're going to give me a ride to work. And I'm going to do everything you say, and I'll do whatever you want me to do. I don't care. Just tell me. And do literally, like that day, I became a savage in my head. I started, um, I had a lawn, lawn chair. You know, poor people always had a lawn chairs, the plastic ones you pull out, and they go, kick, 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 kick. They, there's a little clicking noises. Well, poor people, we have a bunch up in the garage, right? I don't know how, everybody's got a bunch of lawn chairs in the garage. Well, I took the lawn chair and I put it in the middle of the drive, right? And literally nobody could pull into the dealership without me stopping them because I had the lawn chair in the middle of the drive. People hated it. Dude, I got in fights every day. They broke those lawn chairs in half. I had a ton of them. I'd got another one out of the garage. But everybody that'd come in, I'd say, hey, sales or service. Hope you're having the best day of your life. Andy Elliott, how can I serve you today? Boom, every single person, man. I took the whole company down. I was selling two cars a day on my own every single day just by blocking the gate. Dude, listen, I stayed outside. I got sunburned. I was out there in the freezing cold. I waited outside the door. I did everything that no one else would do, but that's how I got to 500 grand by the time I was 20. I mean, I remember when I was 19, I went home. I brought my tax return home to my dad. And he goes, you made 120 grand your first year at 18. And, uh, you know, which isn't a lot of money now. It is a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. And my dad goes, what are you doing? And my dad didn't even understand I was selling cars because I was never home. And my dad made like 50 grand as a chemist. And, uh, you know, he's like, I can't believe you can make this much money. And I was like, dude, this is it. And my dad was like, you got to start paying rent. You know what I'm saying? Or, and I, I wasn't paying rent. I was never home. And he's like, and I was like, it, I'm going to go buy my own house now. So I went and bought my own house. I bought me a Corvette. Bought me a big ass lifted Hummer. I was like, dude, I'm going to freaking show the world I made it. So I went through that first stage of like buying all the cool shit. And then, dude, when I was driving to work, I was just ready to go kill everybody because I was just on fire. But going back to, like, like what was it like when he told me? Dude, I was an idiot, man. I'm going to tell you, I accidentally ran into success. Had my buddy's older brother not convinced me to go sell cars and I wouldn't have learned about sales, I would have never made it. We wouldn't be here today and it never would have happened. Sales is the greatest thing that ever happened. And I can tell you this. The era we're in right now, the way that I teach people now, I wish I had me at 18, but at least I had a manager that believed in me, that dealt with me when I was a stuttering guy. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't believe in myself, and I couldn't shake your hand and took the time to teach me, which is why I'm so grateful for leaders and, like, watching you guys build this shit. Like, dude, the people that watch you guys, like these people, they get to level up by watching this, and it doesn't cost anything. All they got to do is change, recreate, and then pay it forward. So, like, I'm just telling you guys, like, I ran into it on accident, but I know reverse engineering it. I know how it happened. It's all because of sales, and it's all because somebody believed in me when I didn't believe in me. And honestly, somebody gave me an opportunity, and somebody saw something in me, and I didn't even see that in me. I wish I could tell you I had this mentor, and he inspired me, and my dad, you're like, hey, my dad was a great guy. He was in the military. He pushed us. Fuck, dude, I wish I had your dad. I would have given anything to run with your dad. But that wasn't the case. I just got fucking lucky. And luckily, luckily, I was smart enough. They I always say when the pain overrides the fear of change, people change. So, like, I was so sick of being embarrassed when you told me that I could have this. Well, dude, the pain, like, it's so fucking high and I'm sick of it. I'm like, dude, I'm not afraid to change. Who do you want me to be? Who do you want me to act like? Who do you want me to talk like? Which one of them do you want me to beat? Like, I just needed instructions. And I was a soldier ready to go to war. And I had a good manager who told me exactly what to do. He told me where to stand. He told me how to talk. He told me how to present. He told me how to shake hands. He told me how to do everything. And I did exactly what he said. 
and no one else in that company could talk me out of it. Here's the cool thing. You ever taught somebody, but then other people are in their ear too, so it f***s everything up? He told me, he goes, other people are going to tell you other things. You better not listen. You only listen to what I say. Do you understand? And I was like, yes, sir. And dude, he, he was 22 years old. I was 18. But he was better than me. And he could close any deal. He was a stud. But the fact that he did that, though, it like, it like he told me not to listen to anybody else. It allowed me to stay in my lane. So we'll, we'll move quicker, but I'm just trying to tell anybody that, like, if you're wanting to grow, like, one bad person in your ear is going to f*** you up. Hey, whether you stumbled onto success because you have great families or whether you accidentally, you know, run into somebody that believes in you, like, like you better not take it f***ing lightly. And if somebody believes in you, it's disrespectful for you not to give them all you got. And that was all I did with that guy. Yeah. Now you said that you had got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, right, if you know, you ran into an opportunity and it ultimately lucked out for you, but for an 18 year old kid who's watching this right now and they're stuck in that cycle of poverty, right? They don't have the mentors around them. What are some actionable steps? Like what's that first actionable step that someone should take to really break that generational cycle of poverty? Well, first thing is you got to start seeing yourself differently, which means you got to get in the gym. You have to, you need to get in the gym. You need to, and, and by the way, listen, I know this is going to sound overrated, the gym will change your life. Go get a six pack. Go work out like a motherfucker for two hours a day. Go do that every day and go eat clean food. And even if you're poor, you can eat ramen noodles and tuna. And you go work out really hard. And I promise you in a year, every motherfucker will respect you. You'll walk into a room and you will immediately have a higher chance of getting anything you want done than the guy's not in shape. Fact. So I would tell you, number one, you don't need money to go get a $10 gym pass, okay? Like, you can go work out. And that, that right there would change anybody if they're, if they're broke. And, but you said poverty mindset. So as you start to see yourself become different, and as you start to see yourself change, this sh starts to change. Um, there's a lie that you must tell yourself. And I was telling you earlier, guys, like Patrick but David talks about future truth. Like, it's not about who you are right now. What it is is who do you want to be? I had a picture on my wall, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when I was younger. You guys don't remember posters because you guys like had like technology and shit. But before technology, there were things called posters. And I used to work out in the room and I would do curls staring at Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I would envision like one day, like I'm going to have arms like that. I'm going to look like that. So I kind of just want to take that and I want to be like 18 year old. Like, dude, like you can be an ugly son of a bitch. Go get in shape and you're going to be way better looking. Okay. Number two, work out really hard. Go find anyone in this world. Find out how they treat people, what their attitude is like, the way they talk, and the charisma they carry. Whether it's an Andrew Tate style, a Brad Lee style, a Patrick Bet David style, uh, an Andy Frizzella style. I don't care. Go, go find someone that you like. Dude, I, I like the way they operate. And f***ing model it to the T. And you're coachable. You, I, I am really good. If I see something, I go, Mike, I can do that. It's just acting is all it is. Like, I can do that. Well, but soon it won't be acting. It's really the way that you've operated and you've adopted a new operating system. This thing in your head only gets worked out with physical fitness and the way you feel about yourself. If you don't like yourself, you're going to be of no value to anybody. Dude, you can't be any good to these two guys if you don't love yourself. It's a fact. If you don't like you, they ain't going to like you either. Am I right? That's true. Okay. Where do you find you liking yourself more? In the gym. When you're in the gym, you do. So do you. Am I right? Absolutely. Dude, listen, now, there are other things that can contribute to that, but go help people and go do all these other things and don't work out and don't take care of yourself. You'll eventually start to hate you, okay? There's this secret, dude, guys. It's the gym. I swear to God, I found about it way too late, and I didn't understand it enough when I was younger. So I would tell somebody now, if you want to take over the world and you're 18 or any age and you're broke, you're broke and you're dangerous. You can change. No one can hold you back. Get in the gym. Keep a good mindset. Go find a... A, a few good buddies. Watch YouTube. YouTube will teach you everything. YouTube is free. You can get on YouTube and you can study anything you want and they will literally teach you for free how to do it. I built my business off learning from YouTube for free. Now, I did pay people once I started to make money, but YouTube, so I would say YouTube, the gym, the mindset will be right. And then I'm going to say one more thing. Find Find a great earning opportunity. I'm going to give you a couple. Solar right now has a really good earning opportunity. I think everybody should have to go knock doors. When you go knock someone's door and then literally they open it and then you have to sell them something, like there's nothing more like getting you better at talking to people than that. 
I think everybody should have to do that for at least six months in their life. I would tell you to go sell solar. And you may say, well, I don't want to sell solar. Dude, you need to. And if you can sell a policy, you probably make yourself about 10 grand per door. So my point is, is that you need to do, I don't care what you want to do, it's what you need to do. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments, tell me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Um, I'm not saying you should sell cars, but you know, car salesmen can make up a couple hundred grand a year. Maybe you do something else. I'm thinking of things that have a zero, a, a zero barrier of entry. Does that make sense? Like you don't have to have a degree, a degree to go to sell insurance. You have to get a life insurance, you know, um, license, right? But to sell cars, you know, you just got to show up. They hire anybody. I'm just going to be honest. You show up, you're breathing. You're like, hired. You know, it's like, that's, I mean, you've seen it, right? And hey, I, I don't think it should be that way. That's just the way it is. Okay. Solar, dude, if you got the courage to go knock on someone's door, hired. And, and you can make good money. Now, it doesn't mean that you'll have the greatest leader, okay? It doesn't mean you're going to be plugged in the greatest company, but you need to understand that that going in, you're just, you want the experience. You need the school. It's called the school of hard knocks, right? Yes, sir. Like, like, dude, you go beat f***ing doors, like you're going to turn into a savage. So there's a lot of things that have high earning potential as being kids. Um, but I would just say, like, dude, I would get in the gym. I would go find a sales job. And I wanna, I'm going to say one more thing. Become attractive. Be, be, become interesting, shake everybody's fucking hand. Don't walk by anyone ever without shaking their hand because you never know. If you don't have the life you want right now, it's because nobody sees value in you to join them on their bad mission. But if you start working on you, which is super important, and you start recreating you, and you start building value in you, and you start seeing you know, a new you, you're gonna have more confidence, and then you're gonna start shaking people's hands, and people are gonna look in your eye and go, this guy's something. I don't know what it is yet, but I like this guy. And somebody's going to reach out and shake your hand, and they're going to give you an opportunity that didn't exist. But when you started working on you, you create that, and those people will start hunting you down. It's a law of attraction. They're going to find you. Absolutely. I, I, I want to go back to when, you know, young salesmen, you finally realize, hey, I got something that other people don't. And, it, like, what were those sort of things? You know, you talk about self-belief a lot. Like, there's a huge part, and – a lot of the people that you help, most of the time, their biggest problem is they just don't believe in themselves. Besides that self-belief, what are some of those things, whether it's the technical things or just little things you did in, when you're in the sale that were different than what other people did that you realize, hey, I could take this and help people and we could all make a shit ton of money together. What are some of those things that you realize, hey, I do this a little bit differently that helped advance the sale forward, help me get more closings? What are some of those tactics that you use and you teach in your trainings? Yeah, so, so well, I'm going to give you a couple things. Number one, before you even go to ever talk to anybody or answer a phone or go face-to-face, -face, whatever you're going to do, you got to have a delusional belief that everybody can buy, came to buy, and will buy as long as I do my job. So you need to know and vision in advance how this bitch is going to go down. It's like before you hit a golf ball, you already know where it's going to go. You're like, dude, it's going to go right there, and that's where it's going to go. And then you do what you've been trained to do, and you hit it, and it goes there. Okay. Most salespeople don't do that. They hope that something's going to work, and that's exactly why they get their ass dusted. So some things that I did is, number one, I have a delusional belief. Everybody can buy, came to buy, and will buy as long as, you do, as, long as I do my job. So like I know going into this, I'm shutting this shit down. They're going to buy something. That's the way it's going to go, and then I start. Hope you're having the best day of your life. Then I'll answer that phone. Does that make sense? So delusional belief is number one. Number two, have a great attitude. Dude, people just don't have good attitudes anymore. It's like everybody's just doing shit in that nowadays because they have to do it. It's like, dude, we're sick of your fucking shitty ass attitude. Have a good attitude and, and look, how about, can I get a little more? I give a fuck. Okay? Like, people just don't seem like they care. And it's pissing me off. And there's no reason that people hate salespeople or hate people because they don't freaking look like they even care or want to be there. So have a damn good attitude and people will love you. Now, if you have a great attitude, if you have a delusional belief, and then you go in to do whatever you're going to do, here's some goals. Number one, you got to find out how people heard about you, okay? Because that's super important because that'll let you know where to take them because you know where they came in from. Does that make sense? Like, did they come in from over here? Did they come in from over here? Did a buddy tell them about it? Like, you can use all that shit as leverage. And then number two, dominant buying motive. Dominant buying motive. Like, what's the number one thing that's driving them to actually get a hold of you or reach out or request for information or drive into the showroom, whatever it is, right? Like, what do they want? 
So that dominant buying motive is called the goals. So in order for anybody to make a decision to buy something, their goals need to be at the center of the decision they make. So your goal is that you need to constantly remind them like it's life insurance. You know, obviously you requested some information on life insurance, so I know that it's super important. So in the event that if you were to pass or die, that you leave some money behind for the people that you love. Would you agree? Thank you for reaching out today. By the way, death is an uncontrollable. We can control a lot of things, but one of the things we can't control is death. Would you agree? Would you like to know how I know if life insurance is right for you or not and how you, whether you should purchase it or not? Would you like to know? See, I'm framing you. In the last 30 seconds of your life, the last 30 seconds of your life, on the, if you knew you were going to pass, on the worst day of your family's life, when your husband, your wife, and your children are left, right, whoever it is that's behind that we're leaving this money behind for, do you want to make sure that when you're gone, they're left with the, with the tax-free check to be able to make it and live and, and support themselves without you? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Then we get life insurance. That's simple. If you don't want them to have a check, then we don't get it. Does that make sense? Okay. And since death is an uncontrollable and nobody can decide when we're going to die, then we need to move forward and do this now. So you can sleep like a baby tonight knowing if something happened, they're taken care of. Would you agree? Do you, do, okay. So I just closed you guys on that. Okay. But, but I want to tell you how I did it. I took the goals, your goals, what you want, and I kept it at the center of the decision. Does that make sense? Which means that the decision, the goals that you had was if something were to happen, that there would be some money left behind for the people that you love on the worst day of their life. Okay? Now, what if they say, well, I found it cheaper with another insurance company? See, because salespeople get objections. You can say, I totally understand. Hypothetically, if you were to die and you didn't do business with me, which my insurance company, every check that we've issued out when somebody has died has paid and they've never ended up in probate. But because money was important to you, so you decided to go the cheap road and save some money, I don't like cheap stuff, do you? See, so I don't like that we're talking about cheap stuff, but let's say that you did go with the cheaper method and you died and went to heaven and you found out that your kids never got a, a check because it was stuck in probate for five years and it never paid out. And you paid the premium for years for them to get that check. How would you feel? Well, to ensure that you never have to, well, number one, you couldn't do anything about it because you'd be in heaven and your kids would suffer, okay? So to ensure that you don't ever get pissed off and have to go through that, we need to make sure that you go with an insurance company that does have a high delivery rate, who checks don't end up in probate, and who makes sure that whenever people sign up with their policies, they actually get the check when you're gone. Now, when I hang up the phone right now, or when I'm done, I'm actually going to call your children, which are your beneficiaries, and let them know that their father made a decision that in the event that something happens, that there'll be an insurance check in place so they don't have to panic or worry. And they'll know that I'll be the one calling them to issue them the check so that they'll know what to do. They'll also have my number if something happens. Is that okay? Great. See, I've already closed you now. Now I pre-closed you to tell you I'm going to call your beneficiary. Right? I'm going to let your family know that you loved them so much that you made a decision to go ahead and put something in place for them because you're such a great dad. This, this can work in any business. But notice I keep the goals at the center of the decision. Salespeople don't sell this way anymore. You know why? They're all amateurs. So this is how I teach people to sell. So I'm going to give you guys some stuff here, which is cool. We train 500,000 salespeople around the country. I train salespeople literally how to go out and build themselves a great life. Now, when you sell, it allows you to get a girlfriend. It allows you to, you know, to, to go get a job. It allows you to hire the right people for your team. It allows you to sell somebody to believe in your vision or your dream. It allows you to do all this stuff, man. Like, like it plays out all the days of your life, man. Like, dude, you're always selling. Like, when are you never not convincing somebody to believe in what you want them to believe in? Am I right? And like, people think they're not in sales. And that's why everybody's so fucking average. Like, dude, like people need reasons and excuses why they should say yes to what you're asking for. And that's what sales is. And it's so good, man. Do you think a wife wants to continually be sold on her husband? Why she married him? Why she got, do you think she needs to be recommitted to him every day? Yes. What's well, his job to continually give her reasons and excuses why they're married together to keep them, to keep her sold on him all the days of her lives. Cause if you don't, you'll be sleeping in the same bed. You're miles apart, which is what most marriages are. It's like, it's like, dude, the secret is sales. Anyways, you guys keep rolling, but I'm just telling you, 
showing you guys that with insurance, now that you can understand how a sale goes down, like that, that's how I close every deal. That's how I broke every record. And that's how I teach people right now how to crush it in every industry. So if you're door knocking, like I can knock on anybody's door and get them to say yes and sell them on the spot. I can do anything. It doesn't matter. There's nothing I can't do once I understand that I speak for a living and that I make money using my words, tying them together and letting them flow like water to get people to understand my delivery of what I want them to, to know or what I want them to do. Anything. I love that, especially about the knocking doors. I think it's – well, before Hard Knocks, I actually knocked doors for a, for a home remodeling company. You did? I did, and it is unreal. Not only the things that you learn, but also just the power of, like, persistence. And one of the things that – like, after, you know, you've had your career as a salesman and you're working your way up, you become a GM of your dealership. What were some of those qualities that you look for on people that you bring on? And what are some of the things that stands out and say, hey, this guy's, this guy's going to work and he's going to be a killer for me? Well, simple. Well, number one, and I want to tell you this, like the way I understand, now, let me tell you what I would do now. Now, back then, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't have very good leaders. Okay. If you were willing to work hard, if you were going to show up on time, dude, literally we would hire you and we'd train you. I'm just being straight up. Okay. Um, you know, cause I don't want to ever lie to anybody. Like we've all had to go through shit to become who we are now. Now the Andy Elliott today who I hire or people who believe what I believe. If it, look, if I operate a certain way, you, you know who I hire us, us, how I operate, how we operate, how we do things, how we believe. I don't lie. I don't cheat. I don't steal. I'm good to my family. I take care of my kids. I show up every day to work. I like to work out. I have a good energy. Okay. That's us. I only hire us. If you came on and you're like, Hey man, I want to be here. I'm like, is he us? And if you're not us, you don't work here. Like, so that's what I would tell any leader out there is it's like a brand book, you know, like when you're building a brand, like what colors do we use? How do we operate things? How does this go? Like as a leader, you create a brand book for your company. And like, if people don't fit that brand, they don't come in period. And that's why people screw up companies because they just hire people because they think that hiring people is going to fix problems. No, it's not human capital, train your people, but hire people who believe what you believe, which means a lost leader will have a lost team. A te the leader can't give the team something that he don't have. And the team can't be what the leader's not. So it's like the leader is everything. You know what I'm saying? So I, anyways, I just want to say, like, if you're a badass leader, identify what you want, and then that's the only thing you hire. Nothing else. Period. I take no risk with anybody else. And you may say, well, be open-minded. No f***ing thanks. I know what I like. I know who I want to be around. I know who I do well with. I know these people. And by the way, it, 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 I, do, I, do, I tell them up front what I want. I tell them who I want to be around. And I tell them, like, dude, you don't want to come here and we're not right for you. And I don't want you to come here. And I'm like, dude, I don't like this guy. So why don't we just, like, let me tell you what I want. And then that's why I like social media so much. Because, like, people reach out every day because they're like, dude, I want to work for you because they've seen how we operate. So I think leaders need to build brands. And then people would be like, dude, I want to work for that guy because I see how he believes. And then that leader now would be getting those type of people. And they wouldn't even have to put an ad on Indeed. Like, people are coming to you now because they see the way you operate. And that's why social media is so important for leaders. But anyways, don't ever go outside of your belief and hire somebody that doesn't believe that way. Eventually, you're going to end up letting them go or they're going to sink your company. And across a bunch of different industries, a lot of people have a misconception that sales is only a transactional as opposed to a relationship business. No but you yeah. hear the quote, people buy from people that they like, meaning it doesn't matter if you're selling mm -hmm. local motives, paper clips. People don't care. People buy from people. So let me ask you this. What has the... What has been the significance of being able to sell yourself as opposed to just products and services? Like how important is it being able to sell yourself to companies? Yeah, so there's two things. I want to go back to what he said. So when you're going to someone's door, right, people buy from people that remind them of their friends. So like literally, like you've got to be really good at like breaking the ice with people quickly. you got to be good at laughing. Like, dude, I can look in your eyes and tell if you like me or not. Hey, do you smile when you talk? Come on, man. If you ain't smile when you talk, I ain't going to smile with you either, okay? Like so there's some things that you can do to make people like you. But I'm going to tell you this in sales. Yes, you, you need to make sure that people like you. But, but secondly, you also need to be a professional at what you do. Because I know a lot of people that are really cool that are still amateurs at their job. Like for real. Like they suck. They're not any good. I like them, but they're not any good at their job either, okay? So I really want to go back to this speaking thing for a minute, okay? Anybody that's out there right now, anybody that speaks for a living, if you sell, you speak. You got to speak for a living. I mean, just because you guys are holding a microphone, whether you're not or you are, like, you're speaking. 
you guys are talking outside. That was a conversation. We had to decide do we like each other out there by the way that we talked. Everything is about speaking. So I think that our age, I think if you really want to crush it, learn to fucking speak. Learn to talk. Learn how to have a conversation with somebody. Learn how to get people excited. Learn how to get people to want something. I always say this. Make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and make it the client's idea every single time. You've got to make it people's idea to, to buy something from you. Their idea. Which means you got to position your words to make it easy to say yes to. you got to position your words to make it hard to say no to. And then if you're really cool... Well, then they'll buy from you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you hit doors. You remember when you hit doors? Yes, I did. Yeah. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, well, I would, uh, so my, my, my. Can you get me to say yes right now? I, I don't remember the pitch entirely, but I remember I'd, I'd crack open the, uh, the door with like, a, with like an icebreaker. I'd say, uh, I'd knock on the door, and one of the things I would do different is everyone where, you know, the, the, they'd have like the, the cardboard box or like the, the little keypad. And I was like, I don't want any of that because you look like a salesman. So I'd knock on the door, uh, have myself sideways so they couldn't see that there's, certain, there's a logo on my, on my chest and that I'm selling to them. And they'd answer the door. I'd say, am, am I late? And they'd be like, late for what? Am I late for dinner? And then, and then they'd act confused or they'd laugh. And, and you get a variety of emotions. And then I'd be like, hey, I'm Josh from HD Exteriors. And then I'd, I'd give my pitch. But um, it, was, it was interesting because one of the things that I, I feel like I learned during that time is when I first got started in that, I was terrified. I was like, there's no way I'm about to go knock on someone's door. You know, it's the mid-afternoon. They just got done with their work. And I'm going to go knock on this door and try to go set up an appointment to go, you know, really like they, they, like they need, you know, home remodeling. And then it wasn't until I changed my mindset of that, I like this person needs my service. And if they don't go with me, they're going to go with someone else. And so it almost become like my obligation to service this person because if they don't go with me and my company because we deliver the best customer service and the, the best product, they'll go with someone else. And it was almost selling myself on, on my company's belief that allowed me, I'd say, to be successful within that, that industry. Yeah, I love that. And I, Well, the reason I want to say that is the reason why a lot of salespeople don't sell anything is because they don't know what to say. Like when he went and he said, hey, man, what's going on? Am I late? Late for dinner? You're like, dude, that didn't work. Come on, man. Like, would you have bought from him? Yeah, I mean, but but my but do you see? But hey, by the way, listen, I'm not hating on him because you went knock doors, you did that, you probably sold some shit, and that was great. Could you imagine if you were taught by a master communicator that would show you exactly what to say and guarantee and ensure that your clients would say yes to you? What would that be worth to you? Priceless. Yeah. Okay. So I'm giving you an example. Like we'll take a solar rep, right? You know what solar is, right? Yeah. Okay. Solar is what they put on the roof, right? It's a secondary energy source, right? Which people can use, right? Answer the door. Knock, knock. Hey, uh, can I help you? Yeah. Hey, what's going on? My name's Andy Elliott. Um, my company's been allocated to this area because research shows in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are going to double or triple. I got two quick questions and I'll be on my way, okay? Now, number one, do you believe inf inflation is real? Do you think things are costing more money, yes or no? Yeah, I mean, every time I go to the store, the cost of chicken. Just everything's costing more money, yeah. Sure, gas, all of it's just costing more money. Number two, do you think you'll want energy all the days of your life? Like, will you always use energy or do you ever see yourself running your house off candles? Probably always use energy. <laughs> always use energy, right? Once we have energy, we'll never want to go without it. Well, my question is, with your current energy company, if they were to triple your bill right now or went to $5,000 a month, you'd have to pay it or you would run your house off candles because you wouldn't have any other way to run your energy. Am I correct? That's correct. Let me ask you a question. If there was a secondary energy option in which you could qualify for that would allow you to be inflation proof and save you money, would you want to know about it as a homeowner? I think I would. How you doing, sir? My name's Andy Elliott. My job is to get the information from the people who have it to the people who need it, which are the homeowners. I've got a secondary energy option in which we've learned that 30% of the homeowners in this area can't qualify for, but if you could, it would save you a lot of money. It would allow you to be inflation-proof, be in charge of your money, and have a secondary energy option in which I think that you would love. Can I get a copy of utility bill? And I'll look at it, and I'll see if it'll save you money. And if it doesn't, no big deal, but if it does, I'll explain how. Is that cool? How do we get started? Dude, that's quick. Now watch. My point is, I take salespeople. I've got guys making millions of dollars. Listen, I'm not talking two or three hundred grand. I mean, I can take a brand new 20 year old kid and I can make him a million dollars a year. Now, I want you to understand this, okay? Number one, I teach him that solar is good, okay? Like, whatever it is they're gonna sell, like, remodeling is good, okay? Like, the greatest asset anybody ever had was their home, okay? Do you know how it feels for your wife to come home every day and go to her bathroom or go to her kitchen and look out there and that's not her dream place? Look, I promise you, at the end of the day, going and buying a new house is way more expensive than remodeling something in your current home. Okay, and by the way, if we remodel it, the property value goes up. So really, it didn't cost any money. It was free. Am I right? Yeah. 
So would you remodel your house if it was free? Yes. Yeah, well, it basically is free because we're going to spend the money. Your property value goes up, and if you ever decide to sell it, you get your money back. So it's like, bro, like you got to be quick with this shit. And, and by the way, it's common sense, and I'm giving you the facts. But the way that I speak, it's like I believe it. Like I know this. And, and so that's what sales is. Sales is a level of confidence that everybody in the room is just drawn toward to you. Like, dude, this motherfucker knows what he's doing. Like, I don't know. Like, I just want to do what you want me to do. And that, and that sells. So I want to explain to you that I teach these guys in all these industries or, and gals to make, to make millions, not even six figures. Like, this is not even fair, man. Like, dude, when I was younger, I couldn't make this kind of money. Now you guys can make this kind of money. And by the way, like, I need you to know this, that all these people out there right now that you talk to, they're influencers. They want to be entrepreneurs. And by the way, some of them don't want to be entrepreneurs. They want to be entrepreneurs, right? An entrepreneur is working inside somebody else's business that you want to help someone else blow their business up and you're going to get paid really well helping them. I think that's smart for a lot of people because when you're the entrepreneur, you get sued. Shit happens. I mean, you go out of business. I mean, like you got to front all the money, the expenses, the risk. I mean, like, do you want to own the company or do you want to work inside somebody's company? Whatever it is, you got to speak, you got to talk, you got to sell. Like, and that's why, like, I'm telling you, like learning the skill, what I just did, like door to door with him real quick, like in solar, bro, I teach guys to dust everybody and to smoke it and have happy customers do, which is important because the customers need to be happy. You need to get paid really well and you need to have a great life and you need to love what you do and be proud of yourself. Let me ask you this though. Had I given you some objections, right? So like you have a prospective client. You, you give have, me any objection, I'll fucking shut it down. I'll, I'm going to do an example, but I want to ask a question first. Yeah. If you have right, a prospective client, someone who's on the fence, they're leaning towards a no. How do you turn a no into a yes when you're in a, in a sales scenario? Well, the goal is, is that so there's selling and closing and selling is what happens before the offer hits the table. Closing is what happens after the money hits the table. Does that make sense? Yeah. Your job is to kill all limiting beliefs during the sell by keeping their goals at the center of the decision and reminding them how we got in touch with each other today. Now today, you got in contact with me because taking care of your family or making sure that your wife, when she came home every day, was in a great mood because she saw that, you know, because she's sick and tired of the kitchen looking a certain way is, is how we got together. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Now you have 10 or 15 different companies that you could probably choose to do the remodel for this kitchen. Am I correct? Yes. Your wife, she seems amazing. She has an idea in her head that she can't, she can write it on paper all she wants, but she knows what she wants that kitchen to look like. Am I right, ma'am? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, the only person she's going to do business with is the person that can guarantee and ensure that the idea she has in her heads, she's going to come in here, snap her fingers and look in the kitchen and see it done. What if you pay someone less money? What if you pay somebody any amount of money or even more money and what she has in her head doesn't happen in this kitchen? How do you think she'll feel? She'll be pissed off. Now, would it be worth spending any amount of money with somebody that can't take the vision she has and ensure that it happens? Yes or no? No. That's why you're going to use me. I'm going to tell you what I'm best at. Yes, I'm really good at remodels. Yes, I'm really good at talking to people. Yes, I'm really good at keeping my word. But I'm really good at taking what your wife has in her head, whether it was a swimming pool, a kitchen, or a bathroom, and making sure that when she walks in here and sees it, She's blown away, and not only what it, was it what she wanted, but it was better than what she wanted. And if I could give that, the juice is worth the squeeze to buckle down and go with that person. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for choosing me. I'll make sure that what she sees in her head, I'll put in that kitchen. Guaranteed. Okay? Hey, you know something? They don't teach that in school. They don't teach that in school. <laughs> okay? But, but that's the secret, guys. How, what was my confidence like when I did that? Through the roof. Guys, that's it. Match yeah. energy. Yeah, and by the way, do you notice how I basically took, I said, and by the way, I diverted you. You're like, well, I don't know, or I've got more, I want to get more estimates. And I'm like, no matter who gives you an estimate, no matter who you go with, no matter what happens, if it's swimming pools, I'm like, dude, your wife looks out in the backyard, and so do you, and you guys envision what the swimming pool looks like. You envision what the, what the landscape around it looks like. You envision what it looks like when you look out in the backyard and you see your kids swimming. You guys see this. And whoever you give your money to, you're trusting that they can make that happen. Would you agree? No matter about what batter about papers and, and scales and blueprints and tape measures they get out, if that doesn't show up, you guys are pissed. Do you guys, do you guys know that every day people pay money and don't get what they want and they just have to live with it because the money's spent? The one thing that I can guarantee and ensure and that I can tell you guys and look into my eyes, when you guys spend your money with me, what I'm greatest at is this. 
Number one, the property value is going to increase at the roof when we do the pool. So really the pool's free. Notice I always right back around to that. Okay. And then number two, I'm going to take the idea that you have in your head and you in your head, and I'm going to produce that idea and I'm going to make it a reality. And what's that worth to you? Everything, right? Well, I don't need everything. I just need you to shake my hand and let's make it happen. See, you just wrap them. You wrap them. Yeah. I fucking love this. Shit. Yeah. Nobody can tell me no. It's physically impossible. You can't tell me no. You could tell me anything. I'll shut you down. But this is what we train companies on doing. And by the way, people tell you they can do something, but they can't really do it. So I live in this space. And honestly, because I'm 44, guys, I feel like I'm 18. But because I'm 44, I'm like, dude, I would have given anything to have a teacher like me when I was younger. So all I love doing is teaching people how to sell and teaching them all the stuff that I can do so that they can go honestly be way bigger than me and better than me, hopefully way younger than me and just like, just like go do some really big shit. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you this because something that you, you know, we've talked about a lot today is that you have to, the, the way to win is to out self develop yourself amongst your competitors amongst other people. And one of the biggest things that you talk about is, is getting your ass in shape, right? And, and that's kind of one of the requirements that's needed to work for you. But for you personally, though, what has been the importance or what has been the correlation of your physical fitness to your financial success? And for somebody watching this right now who, you know, I love and you talked about earlier about you could be broke. The first thing you need to do is get your in shape. You walk in the room, people treat you differently because they know that you're disciplined and you're serious. Mm -hmm. What is the correlation between physical fitness to financial success? Well, it's, it's everything. Because even if you don't get in shape along the way and you do make it, you're going to hate yourself. Like, what's the value of, like, saying, hey, you know, I'm going to make all this money, and then one day when I'm on my yacht, I'll go get in shape. Dude, you'll never make it to the yacht. And if you do, you'll have fat chicks rolling with you because you won't look good. And more than likely, listen, you'll also have lost your family along the way because if your family was with you, your kids probably don't look up to you anymore because you don't take care of yourself. And then also, you probably weren't very good to people along the way because you don't, you don't love yourself anymore. When you go to the gym, you're in a great mood for the next 12 hours. Right. So if you just go to the gym every day, like even what it does for you physically and for your mindset, the value that other people get just being around you because you're in a great mood is like dangerous. Dude, walk out of the gym and like you're ready to go sell some shit. like you're ready to go do whatever. Matter of fact, I was talking to Andy Frizzella, like I said, last week and Andy was like, dude, I can't even do a podcast. I can't talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. I don't even be around my team until I work out like I need like I need like to do that for me honestly like it's my therapy like I don't know like what people like some people drink when they're stressed out some people like do drugs you know some people complain some people are negative I just hit the gym man it, it just makes me so happy man like it just it, it just reminds me man of how awesome it is to be alive and it reminds me the true value of health because you know like if I would give you 10 million dollars right now right but you couldn't wake up tomorrow you wouldn't take it right Right. So it shows that health is more valuable than money. So the fact that we wake up every day means that that's worth more than 10 million. And if I gave anybody 10 million right now, how would you feel? We gave any client watching this right now, $10 million. They'd be on fucking hand. Woo. -hoo! They'd be going crazy. Right? Well, dude, if waking up is more value than 10 minutes, 10 million, do you wake up going, Woo? -hoo! No, man. It's like, bro, dude, you got to get your shit right. Like the fact that you woke up this morning, you're alive, get your ass in the gym, be thankful to God, go work out hard, and then now go do something with it. And by the way, the school of hard knocks is, dude, if you don't have a great life, well, you, then you beat the sun up. Rule number one, you get your ass in the gym, and I promise you, dude, your life will start to change. Everything in life is about habits. Good habits, good mindset, great opportunities happen. You know, if you don't have a good opportunity in front of you right now, go work out for the next freaking couple months. I'll bet you money, somebody in that gym, some business owner, somebody will see you putting the work in. They'll see something in you and they'll come shake your hand. You know, like, like, dude, people are looking for people right now to run their companies. People are looking for people right now to work for them. People are looking for people right now to help them be the needle mover in their businesses. I mean, they're looking for, man. And if you're not going out there and you're not working on yourself, like, dude, they're not going to see you. So that's why I think this podcast is about getting people seen so they can get these opportunities and they can enjoy life like we do. And we got to keep living this way and we got to keep getting better because if you stay as good as you are now, well, someone who's watching you now will eventually catch you. And plus your audience won't stay with you if you don't get better. I tell my team every day, I'm like, dude, if I don't keep getting better every day, the day I quit getting better, my, our audience is gone. You don't think somebody else is going to get their attention? Dude, these cell phones are in everybody's hands. They've got millions of other influencers, you know, 
and, and people trying to talk to them at all times. How do we keep their attention? By proving to them that what we said we will do, we will do. Which we said we will get better all the days of our life until we die. And we will be psycho-obsessed with winning. And we will make sure that we love them, we care about them, and we'll make them feel accepted and we'll be close to them. Like, we must keep doing this. All it takes is a couple of days of backing off this and you look up and everybody's gone. Yeah, abs- absolutely. And, you know, it, it's crazy because people, they put money on this pedestal, but they don't value waking up, just like you said. Um, I mean, and, and going to the gym is a big part of that. You wake up, you got to self-improve yourself. You know, you mentioned Andy Purcell a few times. Shout out to him. 75 hard changed my life. I recommend it to anybody. If you're listening to this right now, go do that. Um, but you also woke up in a different way. You know, when you were 39, pretty much you said you, you woke up very similar to us three, like, we were going through the school system. We were just like, th- you know, this just isn't, this isn't really setting us up for where we want to go. Like, yeah. like we talked about the nine to five trap. Like, it puts you in a ceiling. You can't smash through that box with the nine to five. So, what were some of those things that you noticed uh, before you woke up as an entrepreneur and be like, I got to, I got to be the owner. I got to go to the top here. What were some of those things that you were just like, hey, I got to take things to the next, next fucking level. Uh, that you know, maybe similar to us when we were just like, hey, instead of going to work a job out of college we got to go start our own thing and do something like that. Well, so one of the things that I'll tell you guys, and you guys haven't gone through this, but yours could be a little different. So I've been married for 17 years. Okay. I got my wife when I was in my twenties and she's amazing. She's a CEO of her company. She's a savage dude. She can do a hundred pushups in a row. She can do 50 strict pull-ups. She's a savage. She'll go run 50 miles right now. She'll, she's a killer dude. And she's 42 and she runs like she's 18. We got three beautiful kids. She's Mexican. She's just awesome. No, but but I want to tell you something. I uh, I was working so hard on the the job and building somebody else's dream, um, you know, which is fine, right? Like you know, because that's part of the game. Sometimes, sometimes you want to build somebody else's dream, and I could tell that I was leaving my family behind. I was working really hard. So you guys, you know, don't have kids. You're not married yet. Listen, you need to understand this. For older people, they'll get this. Um, a lot of times we give it all we got, and then when you decide to have a family, um, if you're not there for them, they learn to live without you. They do. They they literally learn to live without you. They're not. They don't see you because you come home when it's dark and you leave when it's early, and you know you're trying to build a business, which I don't think I had the definition of success nailed right. When I was 39, success to me was making money, and then I realized at 39, my wife reminded me, which I'll tell you right now. So my wife walks up to me. It was all very quickly how this happened. Um, I, she heats the food up for the 15th time. And I keep saying, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. And uh, she's like, F- this, I'm going to bed. And, you know, like, dude, you don't want to do that, man. Because when you guys marry somebody who's really good to you, you don't want to be a piece of shit, man. Honestly, dude, I was trying harder on my business than I was on being a dad and on, on my uh, marriage. And, and, and I was a great guy. And I was doing better than most. But that wasn't my standard. I've always been better than that. And what happened is business has gotten hard, so I needed to work more. But, dude, at the end of the day, you got to keep your priorities straight. If I was to get sick, the only people that would be there for me and my wife and kids, it wouldn't be my business. And I was putting my business way before them. And I was talking about always working on my business, and I wasn't talking about working on them. You know, I remember one time my wife said something. I was really talking to somebody on the phone, and I was all fired up, and I was motivated. And I didn't really catch this, but it was about a week or two before. She goes, man, I wish I could get some of that. And, and I'm like... Like, 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 what do you mean? She's like, just have you pay attention. And I'm like, damn, like I need to be present. Okay. I need to be present at home. Well, so I come home and at this time when I'm 39, I'm chunky. Okay. I had hair. If you guys go to YouTube right now, you type in Andy Elliott, you know, you can go from oldest videos to newest, yeah, yeah. just go to oldest. And you guys are like, no f-ing way. That's not Andy. And you guys are going to say, oh, you're going to sh- dude. Yeah, but, but I want to tell you, it's just homework for everybody. YouTube, go to oldest and newest, and you're going to see me before I transformed. And I was chunky. I had hair. I'm making money. I think I'm doing good. I'm fucking lost. I'm lost, dude. My, my wife should just left. I shouldn't have been. I mean, I was a good guy, but, like, dude, she's a stud. And, like, I'm just being an idiot, but she checked me. So if you guys want to know how I check people so hard now – because I know in order for me to get someone to move, I must, I, must, I must trigger them in some way that pisses them the f*** off, okay? And that's why you see me do it, and it works, because it worked on me. And I'm going to tell you my wife did. Well, number one, she goes, all right, so number one, we've learned to live without you. Very directly, 
me and the kids, we live without you. We don't. We love you. Thank you for giving us this beautiful house and these cars and purse full of money. I don't give a fuck about none of that. You're not here. You're never here. I do all this shit. And you think the definition of success was you providing for us? Nah, dude. I could have married anybody to provide for us. I thought you were going to be the fucking man. I want a man that I can look up to. I don't fucking look up to you. I, I want a dad that my kids can admire and look up to and be their hero. That's not fucking you. You know our son likes Incredible Hulk? You don't look like Incredible Hulk. You're fucking missing it, man. You're giving everything to these people. Everything. And you're fucking giving us leftovers. It's not fucking fair. And, and at that time, ego's coming in. You know, I'm thinking, you don't know where I've come from. You know, you know, like I've had a bad upbringing. You don't know the shit I've been through. And excuses. All lies. Stories. All this shit's coming in my head, right? But I'm just listening to her. And then she reaches over and she grabs my fucking love handle. And I remember this. I swear to God. Like, it can me off morning she grabbed it because i like, kind of like turned around and then she like grabbed my love handle and she goes also she's like this isn't the fucking standard that you you hold and dude i was always in shape and i let myself go and i remember turning around i go what i was like did you just grab my fucking love handle like like i'm gonna fight her right <laughs> and she's like yeah because you've gotten comfortable and dude like i want to kill everybody right now so, before I made a scene, I said, I ain't got time for this. I go into the garage. Number one, I needed to change. I knew that, like, something had to change because either I was going to change or she was going to leave or something was going to happen or I didn't even know what the was going to happen. I worked out for three hours straight in the garage. Three hours straight. I ain't worked out in the garage in a long time, and I fucking worked out for three hours straight. I gave it all I got. I was sweating like a motherfucker. I worked out as hard as I could. No fucking breaks. I'm like, I'm giving everything I got, dude. It was like trying to make up for three years of not working out and a three-hour workout. Like, like I believe that like I was going to regain my, my sh that night. I needed to change. I go look in the mirror. I'm, I'm like, I fucking hate me. So I'm like, dude, I got to shave my head. So I, I, I never shaved my head before that. I just shaved my fucking head. I was so fucking happy because I needed to see something change right now. Like I needed it now. Like, I didn't need it tomorrow. I needed it now. The next morning, I woke up at 4 a.m. I fucking ran an hour straight. I went and fucking worked out. I literally went to work at 5 o'clock. I told my fucking team, you guys better have a big-ass fucking night. Don't even let me down. And I'm going home to see my fucking family. Don't fucking call me. Don't text me. I fucking trust you guys. I believe in you. Make it fucking happen. Can you do that? All right. I'll see you tomorrow morning. I better be fucking impressed. Dude, like, I started calling the shot. I started getting fucking psycho. I started getting in shape. I started going home to spend time with my family. And then I realized that my wife saw me changing, but then like I wasn't taking her with me. So I told my wife, I was like, hey, I want you to come to the gym with me. I want you to work out with me. I want you to be with me. And she's like, I don't want to do this. I don't like working out. Do listen to me. I needed her to go with me. And that's what we did. She went with me. Well, so I was making about two and a half million. I wanted to explain this to you. I walk in to the, to the owner's office because he paged me in there. And he goes, I can't pay you that much money anymore. I'm like, why? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I can do something wrong? He's like, no, but we just don't pay general managers that much money. I'm like, dude, that's my percentage I get paid. So, like, if you get paid 2%, just give me an example, whether you put up a thousand, 10,000, a trillion, whatever, it's 2%. Am I right? It's not like 2% up until you make us X amount of money and then we get to keep the rest and you don't get paid anymore. What the fuck? This is sales. <laughs> it's like, and, and I remembered that was the last. So, so, I hated being betrayed. I've been betrayed my whole life. And I was like, I'm fucking getting betrayed. I've given everything to this guy. And I was like, fuck it, dude. I can't believe this. I go home. I tell my wife. Well, number one, I quit. As soon as he told me that, like, if betrayal, like, I'm out. So I quit, and I go home to my wife. And she's like, We're, you're not going back. We're going to do something else. We have to do something else. He called me back the next day, and he goes, hey, come back. I'm going to keep the things the same. They always do that. And she's like, no way. You're not going to go back. We're going to find something else. And that's when we got on YouTube. 
and we saw all those videos that had worked from like four years ago. And she's like, why don't we start recording YouTube videos? We'll start a training program. We'll start doing this. And then I was like, oh my God, I got us. And then I started watching Tony Robbins and I didn't even know who he was. And then I started watching Ed Milet and I started watching Andy Frizzell and I started watching all these people and I start studying and I start, and I buy a $3,000 course. And then I start buying this and I start buying all this and I just start studying everybody. And then all of a sudden, dude, I'm working out harder because I'm at home. I'm not making any money. But I'm working out like a motherfucker. I'm training. I'm getting close to my wife. I'm being close to my kids. I'm literally, I'm basically building a new identity. You guys were in school. You built a new identity. Okay? You're like, dude, this ain't going to work. This isn't the road we want to go. I'm so proud of you guys for doing it at a young age. I did it at 39. My point is anybody watching this, if they're 60, if they're 39, if they're 20, everybody can make a choice right now to go down a different road. On that road, you are going to have to work out. On that road, the working out will support you through the struggle and the adversity to keep a good mindset through eating shit. Because you're going to eat shit. And you're going to enjoy it because that's the journey. And then the build is the bitch and you're going to find something you want to do. And you're either going to build some, help someone else build a bad business, find somebody you trust, or you're going to build your own business. But whatever happens, if you want to do something, it will involve this little journey, what we just went through. And... People that suffer as a kid usually kill it as an adult. And people who have it babied as a kid, they usually suffer as an adult. But if you've had good parents as a kid and you've had a great life, dude, go show your parents some love, man, and go do some big shit, you know? So, but I've just learned that usually people that really end up making it are the ones that were really poor. They didn't have anything. So they're just ultra fucking hungry. You know what I'm saying? So if you've had a good life and you're doing something big, like, good job, man, because I, I, my kids are very well taken care of. But, dude, I tell my kids, I say, hey, do you want me to treat you like a four or five, you know, six-year-old? Let me teach you like a 13-year-old and feed you ice cream and make you feel good and treat you like a little kid? Or do you want me to give you the cold, hard truth and treat you like the bad ASS that you are? Which one is it? Tell me. Little kid or badass? And they're like, badass, dad. I'm like, okay. I, my seven-year-old, my, my 10-year-old, my 12-year-old. I'm like, you, I'm like, you guys tell me. Badass kid and they're like bass i'm like okay you can do that shit and i'm gonna whip your ass you go that way those people are bad people you go do that you're gonna freaking you're gonna regret it now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i, I treat my kids like entrepreneurs my kids know how to sell i make my kids get on stage overcome objections i make my kids read 20 pages out of a book every day i make them work out every day i make them do all that shit because i know that we've treated them so good and they're not going to be raised as pussies they're not going to be raised soft and they're going to be raised lost. You know what I'm saying? Just because they had it well as a kid, they're also going to be militant as shit and they're going to be little killers and savages, whether they like it or not. And their friends, they don't have to do it. I don't care what your friends have to do. This is the shit that our family does. This is our legacy. This is our blood. This is what we do. I wish my, I wish my parents would have done that to me. But because I didn't get that, now it's our job to give that to our kids. So you guys are you guys are light years ahead of people like me. But what you did essentially was is you, you had to kill the old version of yourself. Total recreation. Right. One thing that I wanted to talk to you about is is one of my favorite videos I've ever seen you in was when you talked about you had all the money, you had all the cars, and you woke up one day and you realized that you were kind of missing that that peace, but you found that fulfillment in God. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that I realized about there aren't a lot of entrepreneurs at your level that talk about that fear and that faith in God and. And it's something that like, I really uh, appreciate about that you display that you have as one of your core values is trust in God. So what really has been the significance of that faith on your career and journey as an entrepreneur? And, and, and just how much has that done for you in terms of your success and, and being able to maintain that? So this is crazy. So I'm, I'm going to tell you about going against the, drain, the grain and trusting in God. So me and, uh, me and my wife, when, we, when, we, when, when I quit my job and we were going into entrepreneurship, we sold our house. Um, and everything, and we were getting ready for this, you know, b this build, right? You know what I mean? Like, we know it's going to be a ride. Um, we started tithing in church more at that time than ever before. I mean, my wife was sometimes given a hundred grand a, a month. She was just, I, I, I was crazy, man. It was scary. We were just, she was like, Gandy, we got to give. Now's the time, man. We need to make sure that you know, our treasure, our heart, like it's where we put our money. And dude, I remember we, we got addicted to just giving and giving and giving and giving. And uh, I, so one of the churches that I'm with is Life Church, uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle in Oklahoma, huge church, massive. They called us, they're like, dude, you guys 
have given more than anybody like or not all the world but like out of most of people like we want you to know what we're doing with this money we're like we gave that much money like what do you mean like we were just giving and giving i want to explain this because this isn't about me giving money this is about when you trust god with your life and your money you have no idea what's possible and my wife it was so scary trusting something that we can't see, but we can feel, but we can't see because we all just got to see it, right? Well, I think doing that, and I'm going to say like that really increased our faith because when you give, you know what I mean? Like it changes everything. Um, when you tithe what everybody else is, that's fine. I, so I'm, This is a tithing lesson. Um, I felt that every time we gave, God gave me a new vision, gave me a new look. It was almost like like I was obeying him for the first time in my life, and I'd never obeyed. I've always been a, like the wild child. I'm the prodigal son that's like the son of a bitch that's living in the pig pen, run back up, and he's like, come on, let me put my robe back on you again, you're back, and then everybody else got to be pissed off, like that son of a bitch is, you know, keep screwing up, and then I would go screw off again, but this time I was actually listening to him. And then I remember, dude, that there was this, um, there was this, and I said this, I said there was this, uh, there was this uh, sermon that he was talking about, like, you know, in First Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your anxieties on God because he cares for you. And it says like a fishing pole, like when you cast it out, like your job isn't to reel it back in. Like, so you got problems, like you need to cast them on God, get rid of them, and then that's it. But most people just reel them back in. They say, God, please take care of this. And then they still walk around with that burden. So I started to learn that all these anxieties about us making it and about us really like creating our company, like I quit worrying about them. I just kept focusing on getting better, on recreating myself, on changing, on becoming a new person, on looking in the mirror and believing different, on being better to people, on being good to my clients, on shooting different content, on deciding I was going to be different. Like I was doing all these things. And it said, um, you know, like the, the garbage man, you'll give him the trash, right? Like you'll put the trash in the trash can, you pull it down to the curb. But then when you come back home at the end of the day you pull the can back up right do you look in the can and see if he took the trash or do you just know he didn't like you just can know right like you don't go like did that son of a take the trash today no you just know and i remember my preacher he's like dude you trust the trash man more than you trust god he's like because you just don't think he's really gonna take it and that you don't check the trash command's trash you give it to him and you don't check but you check he just brainwashed me to say dude just give it so I believed in this, this saying, this first Peter five, seven, that was cast all your anxieties on God because he cares for you. It says the, the devil's like a roaring lion trying to devour you. Right. So I can picture like this lion trying to tear me apart. And I'm like, dude, not today, like not a chance. So me and my wife are pouring in and tithing. I'm training like a son of a we're sleeping on mattresses. We sold our house. We're in a rent house. Our, cl our family's closer than ever. I'm working out twice a day. I'm eating clean food. My wife's making all the food at home. We can't afford to go out. She wouldn't let me buy a coffee for a dollar going out, but she'll give all the money to church. We're doing everything backwards. We're not buying anything for ourselves. And then all of a sudden, the birth of the, the Elliott group happened. Just, it's just crazy. Everything changed. Everything started to go so fast. Everything was so clear. Everything was so simple. All the entrepreneurs that were great people that I looked up to, all pretty quickly all became my friends. Everybody started saying, hey, I see your message. I love your message. I love what you believe in. Why don't you come out and see me? And I'm like, how, did I, how do you get invited to that? How do you go out? And I'm having dinner with these guys. I'm hanging out. We're traveling. They're teaching with me. They're letting me, uh, they're mentoring me. They're looking into my business, telling me what I can do. Like, dude, like they're doing all of these things. And I'm like, man, like, and I, I remember asking my wife, I'm like, why, why us? And my wife's like, why not us? Like, why not us? Like, like Andy, we've been through all the shit, did it all wrong. Why, why not us? We're the most qualified to build something great because we fucked it all up. If you've ruined everything, all you know now how to do is do it right because you've done it all wrong. We're not going to go do it wrong again. We know now the blueprint because we've done it wrong. And my wife's intuition is amazing and I took her with me. And it all started with, with quitting my job and then, and then taking her to the gym with me, making a f***ing decision. See, I made a lot of false promises to my wife for a long time. Babe, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to stop doing that. That was my deal. And then two months later, I was back. I've never went back on my word now with anything that I said. So one of our core values is do what you say you're going to do and keep your f***ing word. And that's why if you lie to me, like I'll never talk to you again.
Like, I don't care. Like, tell me the truth. Tell me the ugly truth. Tell me you f***ing did something really bad. I'm cool with it. And I won't be mad at you. I'll understand it and we'll figure it out. But don't you dare lie to me. And so since I've lived by this like new code, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like people that go to prison, like they come out and like some of them like see life different now. And like they're capable of building a whole new life because they have a different, like, they have a different view or perspective of like how lucky they are to get another shot. Like I believe that my wife woke me up that day, picked me the f off. And dude, honestly, man, I don't, I think I can do anything now. My wife has to calm me down. She's like, dude, chill out. I need to ground you. I need to ground you back into who you are because I want to run so hard. I want to run so high. I know there's so many lost motherfuckers that I just want to keep getting this message. And that's why I love what you guys are doing. That's why I said like, Hey, let's do this because, because you guys, the future of the world is the youth. It's the truth, man. This isn't about money. This isn't about anything. This is about getting motherfuckers instead of going left and getting on the four lane highway and being average like everybody else. It's about them grabbing their fucking sack, being a good man or being a good leader and taking care of their family and doing the hard shit and, and spending money on themselves so they can invest in them becoming great, putting themselves first, and then so they can be a value to the world, their business or other people. And dude, listen, I'm going to be straight up. And people my age, they're fucking pussies. I got to beat the shit out of them. Now, a lot of them are converting and they're changing. A lot of younger guys are coming around, but we need more people. I mean, if there's 9 billion people, I can't, my message isn't enough. Your message isn't enough. We need more motherfuckers, which means you guys need to fucking get these people really serious about change, which is what you're doing, which is why you're traveling, which is why you're spending your time, your energy, and your capital to do this. And then you're expecting them to go fucking do something with all this shit. And dude, like the fact that people can listen to these conversations and these messages and how people built shit and all the mistakes they made and how they almost lost their families and how they were broke and what turning points they had. It's like, dude, like this is priceless. The question is, are you paying attention? Are you really listening? Do you feel it in your heart? Like, and if you do, like, dude, like nobody can fucking stop you, you know? Something I, that you said that is very true is, is the youth is arguably the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a, a common saying that hard times create strong men and easy times create, create weak men. And one of the things that, you know, the youth spend most of their time in is school. And, you know, school, there's, there's a lot of controversy about it. I'm kind of curious about, like, what, what are some things that you would change about the school system? And what are your just, like, overall thoughts on the current school system? Well, first right of all, now? they don't teach anything. I mean, look, I, I get math. Okay. Like I get math. Like I need to, I need to calculate a commission. I need to figure out a payment in my head. I need to do so. I, I mean, I get math. I think math's super important. Right. But dude, but like a lot of this shit that we're teaching people is like useless information. Like, honestly, like it's like, we should be teaching people the whole time how to hold their standard and how to keep core values, how to be a good person, how to love other people. I mean, we should be teaching people to work out exercise. You know, we should be, we should be building soldiers. Like men and women, we should be building soldiers that actually like keep their word that don't, lie. we should have classes on like, don't lie. Like, don't be a fraud. You know what I mean? Like be who you are. And by the way, you are a male and you are female. Like, like we're not, like we're not going to play any f games, right? <laughs> <laughs> like like yeah. I was on stage the other day with Bradley, right? Yeah. And we walk out, there, it was in a, well, there's about 8,000 people, right? And Brad's funny as fuck, right? Cause he's always cracking jokes. He goes, y'all remember back in the good old days when only the men had balls? And that was how we started out, right? And it's just fucking hilarious because, you know, like, now I just see the stupidest shit going on in the world. And back in your day, you know, you had Wonder Woman. In our day, now we have to wonder if it is a woman. Yeah. And, and by the way, at the end of the day, everybody's a little. I'll, I'll say that one more time for them. But back in your day, you know, you had Wonder Woman. And now, you know, in our generation, you have to wonder if it is a woman. So. Yeah. And, 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 and hey, and the fact that the fact that like we're saying this, there'll be people that are like, oh, man, that's some bullshit. Listen, dude, I'm telling you when I say this. OK, and I'm not being weird and I don't judge anybody. OK, and I'm lost and I'm a weird I'm a weird person. I'm broken. I've got all these issues. But like, dude, like there's some shit going on, man, that's like really some, some shit up okay and the fact that people are like leaning onto these these one-off exceptions it's like whenever somebody has something there's a one-off exception like they'll go restructure a whole school for them but then we'll all stand up as people and say hey why don't we teach entrepreneurship in the school now they'll shut us down 
it just clearly states that, listen, to me, I think, you know, I think I get people have to go to school, but I'm going to tell you this, like my kids, they're not going to school. My kids, they're, they're homeschooled. Okay. My, I, I have a military 18 year old or, or 18 year veteran that teaches all three of my kids. She spends two hours a day. So let's say there's three kids, two hours with you, two hours with you, and two hours with you, two hours with each one of you. Okay. And she talks about Christianity. Okay. And, and by the way, while I'm training you and I'm not him, he's reading. Okay. So they're learning entrepreneurship. They're learning Christianity and then they're learning school. And we teach them the topics that they need to understand. We have to follow them a little bit of a curriculum on some things to pass. But, dude, I'm telling you, man, like, like it's just, like, I don't believe in it, dude. And I don't think anybody needs it. And I get it. Like, hey, basically, parents go to school. They go to work, I mean. Who's going to babysit their kids while they're at work? So they put them in school. And then school is a crock of crap. And they go there, and they learn a bunch of shit from a bunch of other negative kids that literally, like, aren't teaching them shit. They're becoming worse when we send them to school. They would stay better if they stayed home. But at the end of the day, like, I can't control that, you know, people don't homeschool their parents. Or so what I think about school, I just, I think that honestly just not even worth talking about because it's just, it's just full of Yeah. I mean, one of my biggest grievances is I went to college and one of the classes I took was an entrepreneurship class. And I asked the teacher, hey, so like what businesses have you done in the past? Like what have you created? And he's never started a business before. And that following semester, I dropped out of college. And I was just like, that's one of my biggest grievances is, is that, and one of the reasons we created the School of Hard Knocks is because I really feel like the best form of education that you can get is if you wanna learn real estate, ask the guy that has a, a hundred units, a thousand units. Ask the people, ask, ask the person who's done it, but not at an average level, at an exceptional level. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we d decided to yeah, create that. Yeah, but they that. won't pay those people nothing. So somebody at an exceptional level is not gonna go in and teach school. Listen, dude, like you gotta pay people a lot of money and then all of a sudden, guess what will happen? The people will be getting a lot of value. And then the kids will come out fucking bad. But we just, we don't pay nobody no money. So we just hire, we, and by, by the way, I'm not saying they're bad people. Cause I'm, I love that teachers love kids, but, but dude, like we're not teaching them anything worth teaching them, which is the truth. Okay. Or we need to keep 20% of it in, take 80% of it out, re replace 80%. And that's why like, dude, we're, we're the educators now. Like we got to educate everybody. Two things I always ask people. Number one, what did you build and how did you build it? And if you can't tell me what you built, so if you came to work for me and you're like, hey man, I want to run your media department, I want to run this, I'm just going to give you an example, right? And, you're, and, and you know, you got some resume and I'm like, all right, what'd you build? And you're like, well, I worked here. No, motherfucker, what did you build? Tell me what you built. Okay, you guys built the, the School of Hard Knocks podcast. Okay, cool, tell me about that. See, that's building something. Okay, number two, how did you build it? Like, because if you can't tell me how you built it, you're fucking guessing. Yeah. And I don't, I don't let people guess on my money. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be around here if I know that you're a guesser because I'm going to invest in you, but I'm damn sure not going to put you in a key position. We're in a world full of people right now that are going around telling people who they are, what they're fucking doing. They're a bunch of frauds, and they ain't built nothing, okay? They ain't built nothing, nothing. And they don't know how they built it. And they didn't build anything anyways. What I love about Andy Frazella, he always goes, dude, listen to me. Show me their brick-and-mortar buildings. Show me their fucking team. Show me their people. Show me that they have something for real. Show me that that shit on social media is fucking paid for in cash. Show me that they really have it, but they won't because they're fake. And it's so easy to be tricked. But guess what? It's getting harder to trick people now because people are getting a little bit smarter. Okay, people used to be able to go on there, throw a couple emojis on a fucking edited reel, and then all of a sudden get some views. Now, people are knowing. There's this uh, there's this code now that I believe is fucking. It's like a like a like a fucking underground code where all the top influencers know who's fucking real and know who's not and we know who we like and we know who we fucking don't like and we know who will endorse and we know who we won't we know who will drive traffic to and we know who we won't and all this is going to come to play one day and you'll look up i promise you guys and you'll see a lot of these guys fade out okay and by the way it doesn't mean that they're not you don't have to be perfect to do it you just got to be a real mother man and you know it's just you'll watch it's going to happen you know what I mean? I'm excited to talk about it. Absolutely. You know, one thing that, you know, we love to ask people that we talk and interview with, we talk about a lot of great concepts and, and, you know, you have a story that you've relayed over the course of this podcast, but going forward, how do you, want, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Well, dude, when I die, number one, I want to, I want to be the craziest son of a bitch that ever lived. I want to be the guy and it says he told the truth. Which means when I'm around people, like I said, if you got food on your face, I'm going to tell you. 
But a lot of people, if you had food on your face, they'd let you walk around all day without it, with food on your face. And they wouldn't tell you shit. They don't care. They don't want to be weird. I don't want to walk around on eggshells around people. I want to tell people the truth. But I want you to know, and I always ask people, right? I always ask permission to be direct. So I'm like, hey, is, can I be direct with you? Okay, cool. Like, because I love you and love don't lie. So I want to tell you the truth. And then I'll like go into that. Does that make sense? So I ask for permission. And I wear my heart on my sleeve and my intentions are good. But dude, I, I want to be remembered, man. Y'all remember Greg Plitt? You guys ever know who Greg Plitt is? Okay. You guys need to write that down. Greg Plitt. P-L-I-T-T. Greg Plitt. You guys would have known him. Matter of fact, you would have fucking looked up to him. And you will when you look him up. He was a badass. He was a fucking savage. He was coming up in the gym space back before websites were really a big deal. And he's making like three million a month on, on websites, like on fitness. Dude, he's a killer. You, when you guys watch him, dude, you're going to be like, I can't believe I didn't know this guy. Did he, go on, did he go to online training and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. He was awesome. He was on Muscle Magazine. He was on all this shit. Like he's, he, he was so cool, man. And, and he, uh, uh, he died. And he was so crazy, right? Um, I'm going to show you something because... You know, like you, you need to see this just for 30 seconds. Um, so, so this right here and this guy, he died and he died. He was out running a train. Okay. So, so imagine this, he's building his life. Okay. And then Nike gets a hold of him and goes, dude, like Greg play Like I want to be around this guy. Okay. Look here. Hold on. Let, me, let me just show you guys this for 30 seconds. See that guy? Okay, but now I want you to understand this this legend, Greg Plitt, I'm watching him. And I'm like, dude, I wanna I wanna be this guy. Like this guy's the sh and he finally starts getting traction in the world. He starts killing it. His last video he ever made. The last video. He goes, One day you're gonna realize you don't have the time you think you have. One day you're going to realize that this is your fucking last day and you're not going to think it is. And it is. And he goes, and I'm going to work every fucking day. And I've been doing this like, like it's my last day, like it's my last breath, like it's all I've got. I'm going to treat it like it's my first day that I got to live and my last day. And I'm going to give it all I got. And, and when I watched that, I remember watching that reel. This is so crazy. I'm watching this. I'm watching this, uh, this video. And the next day, Nike sponsored him, and he they wanted him to outrun a train. That was the video. That was like it was like Nike, and it was a picture of Greg Plitt running past a train and then crossing the tracks. Does that make sense? Because like he outran it, yeah. and he fucking ran down. And when he's crossing, he fucking tripped. Swear to God, and it fucking ran him over. Oh my God. Yeah, and dude, his last video was him saying, "You don't get to live forever." So you better wake the fuck up. I just live in that deal. So my point is that when you say like, how do you want people to be remembered? You guys need to watch a couple of his videos. You guys are gonna be like, dude, this guy's a legend, you know? And, and so my point is, is that like, you know, you guys are inspiring people to do different stuff. Like, what do people want to look like? What do people want to act like? How do people want to behave? Do people need the truth? Dude, you guys need to spend all of your money getting the message out to the world. And if you spend all of your money getting the message out to the world and getting in front of people and doing the right things and recreating yourself and building yourself to be greater, what's going to happen is that you guys are going to go somewhere very far and you're going to be re rewarded so much. What will it be? I have no clue. But I know it's going to be huge. Bigger than you can comprehend. But one of you may not make it. One of you, and I don't mean like make it physically, like, like in like business, but something could fucking happen. Okay, guys, I've had death threats on me. I've had people want to come kill me. I was talking to Andy Frizzello. He had somebody try to take him out. Like, dude, like, you don't understand. When you guys start doing what's right, like, it's going to happen. And, like, that's why you got to be ready. Like, people don't think like that. They're like, what do you mean? Like, you don't have to be a bad person. You can be doing the right thing and people want to take you out. You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys got to know this. You guys got to give it all the f that you got right now. Okay? And so, how do I want to be remembered? Well, I just want to be the craziest son of a that refuse to conform, that could refuse to settle. And I want to be remembered for who I am now, not for who I used to be. But I used to be a piece of shit. I used to not care. I used to be unloyal. And I'm not that way anymore. And now I live by these codes. 
It's like, once you learn, okay, stove's hot, I'm out. This is how I'm rolling until I die. And I just want as many people as we can to live this way because this is the good life and it feels good to sleep at night and know you're doing the right thing. And also, dude, it feels good because right now it's easy to fucking win. You guys can win. Everybody's asleep. Nobody's fucking paying attention. I think it's going to get competitive again in a couple of years. And I'm fucking ready for that. And I always train to get ready to take that motherfucker out. In my mind, I have enemies. Okay? They're not real enemies. I've made these up. Because I'm always thinking about somebody coming and taking me out. So you guys need to create some enemies right here. Who would take you guys out? Who are you after? Because to me, that's important, man. Everybody's not your friends. Don't fucking believe that shit. Well, if you're going to go do anything great, you're going to have people that are going to hate you. Okay? So I love the hate. They're algorithm feeders, feeders, but some of them are real. Dude, our team is strapped everywhere we go. We got fucking everything you can imagine. Okay? People are always like, don't you feel unsafe? I'm like, dude, if somebody came in here, we'd strip them naked. <laughs> Okay, I promise you, we're, we're totally ready, man. If you see my team on any day, I mean, they're totally ready. And we're, hey, I'll, I'll put this out there for those watching. It's just like, hey, I, I will say something that just impressed us right off the bat. It's like, what, like, walk, like walking, like, you got people working out outside, got everybody screeching when you walk in the door. I mean, this is just a, uh, and, and I'll say this one more time is we've interviewed a thousand people, like the facility and the culture that, you know, you guys have built just from how sharp the people are. It's, it's super impressive. Like, I mean that seriously. Cool. And hey, most of the guys aren't even here today. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so like just being in here, like you can tell like this is home. This is real. You know what I mean? But this is home to you guys. So anytime you guys want to come, this is good. Appreciate Thank you. you. And I'll end with just one last question, actually. We always end these off that way. But if you could leave the younger generation with one, you know, guiding principle, one message, like what is your best advice to the younger generation? If you could kind of leave them off with just a guiding principle, they want to create a, a successful life. They, they look up to you. Like what would you leave them with? I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over. Like, once you find out what works, right, like, like you don't change it. What I love about Andy Frizzell, okay, and I know I go back to him because I've been on this kick with him because when I saw – so I went to first form, and, and I'm going to go back to your question. When I went to first form, I, uh, I was fucking sick to my stomach. I was fucking pissed off. I told Andy, I go, man, I'm fucking pissed. I envisioned when I come here I was going to be all excited, but now I'm fucking mad. Because I saw what he built, and I thought I knew what he built, but I was wrong. He built something way bigger than I knew. And now that I saw it, I can't unsee it. So, like, I told him, I'm like, dude, I'm never going to be the same again, man. And I have to live by that. I have to have that. So Andy told me the key how I built all this. I'm going to tell you what he told me. And it reassured me that what I'm doing is right. And that's why that's the advice I'll give. Because one of the people that I highly look up to told me that that's what he's doing. And that's how he got. He goes, I'm not that fucking smart. Facts. And he goes, I'm not that smart. But you don't want it more than me. I'm, I'm not the best at what I do. Okay, I am pretty good, but I'm not the best. There's probably somebody better. But I'm so fucking good about being consistent and doing the same mundane shit every day and doing it like it's the last day I get to do it and the first day I get to do it and the first day I launch my business and I'm so happy to do it that that's why my shit grows because most people they think that it's another strategy it's another plan it's another blueprint it's another deal it's another piece of technology which you know it might be something along the way that could be sprinkled on or added but it's doing the fucking hard work that people get sick of doing you guys start doing this and all of a sudden you're like, I don't want to do this no more. I want to do something else. Sorry. This is how this bitch got built. You have to keep fucking doing it. Okay. We, we made this company by picking up the phone, making calls and taking and taking calls and working all day long. And the minute somebody thinks that we're not going to pick up the phone, call or make calls, take calls, work all fucking day long, they are out. Cause that's how this company was built. Nobody's going to come in here and give me another way to do it. Because that is what we do. That is how we built what we built. Andy Frazella did it for 25 fucking years. And that's how he has something that everybody in the world ha wants. Because he fucking did what no one else will do. So, I'm like, I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to get crazier. I'm going to go harder. I'm going to do more. I'm going to fucking go insane. I'm going to be ahead of this. I'm going to play chess with everything. 
I would just tell everybody with that being said, that whatever you're going to do, become the fucking greatest and the best at it. And understand that I call it mundane, which means doing the same thing over and over again. People get bored. You get fucking bored. You get beat. Enjoy doing the shit that other people don't like to do and get really fucking good at it. Never be too good to pick up, pick up a piece of trash. Never be, be too good to, to fucking wipe the toilet seat off if you fucking piss on it. Never be too good to do this little shit. Because if you can't do this little fucking shit, you will never do the big fucking shit. It can't happen. The world won't give it to you because you don't fucking deserve it. And I'm going to go to Tim Grover for a minute. And I'm done. Tim Grover says winning doesn't recognize you. And that's why you're not winning. Because winning is like a spirit. And it floats around here. And, it, and it's like a human. And it watches motherfuckers. And it sees whether you really want it. It sees whether you're really doing what you told all these people that you were doing on these podcasts. If you're really fucking doing it. And if you're not doing it, it will leave. You've turned it off. And it won't return. And it may come visit you in a couple years to check back in on you. But dude, if you want to win... That winning, that spirit is watching you every fucking second. So make sure that every second hour, of, every second of the day, every hour, no matter who's watching you or not, you know what you're fucking doing. You know whether you're doing what's right or not. You know. You know if you're really being an example to your team. You know when you told your team not to do that, that you shouldn't be doing it fucking either. And what I've learned is most people tell people what not to do, and then they go and do the same fucking shit. Because at some point, they did do the work, and they're not doing it anymore. And they're living off that old wind trying to coach today. No fucking way. I want people doing it right now. And Andy Frazella, he's an owner, but he's still doing the work right now. And he's still grinding right now. And everything that he does, he still loves it. Nothing's mundane. He still enjoys every fucking bit of it. And he takes pride in everything that he does. And every person that's in his company, he wants to change their life their life and see them do better. And he's very direct with them, but also he loves his people. He hates betrayal and he loves studying. He loves getting better and he loves fitness. Okay. 3.0. Andy Elliott 3.0. Elliott Army 3.0. New fucking standards. New law of the land. New way that we live. New way that we believe. Like guys, just all raise your standards. What would I tell people? Like dude, like whatever you're going to fucking do, be the fucking best at it. Do whatever studying you need to be the best at it. Get your guts in the gym. Become a savage. Keep the best mindset ever. Be good to people. Keep your fucking word. Don't overcommit. Go through a season of saying no. If you don't want to do something, say no. People ask me all the time, hey, man, I'm coming in town. I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't talk. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, they're like, let's go to lunch. What are you talking about? I want to go to lunch with you. I, I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you. But take someone else to lunch. Dude, because I don't want to go to lunch with you. I'm not being a dick either. Like, dude, I got so much fucking shit to do, and it's all planned. It's all purposeful. It's all ready. I'm going to fucking war. And if I plan on going to war, and I'm not a fraud, and I'm telling you the truth, then I can't go to fucking lunch with you. That's what I would tell them, son of a bitch. That basically, if you wanted to kill it, and you want to dominate everybody, look, dude, people ain't going to keep doing this. People are going to fall off. Most of the people that are competing with you right now in anything that you're doing, in two years, they're going to fucking quit. Okay, so how bad do you want it? Okay, so the gym has to be a cornerstone of your life. God has to be a cornerstone of your life. If you want to make it and if you want to go big, God can do things that human beings can't do. So be close to God. Make sure that you're staying around the right people. Don't let negative people get around you. If you have a plan and you want to go somewhere, if, if, you, if somebody says, hey, let's go do this, if they're not involved in that plan and you don't see them being a part of that plan, say no. Go through a season of saying no so you can say yes to the right shit. Because when you start to build any kind of coolness about you, everybody wants to take up your time. Everybody wants to do everything to you. And what happens is that you feel like a dick because you can't do it, but you need to understand this. You're doing a disservice to the people that are counting on you to keep the, the mission going forward by stopping and talking to everybody along the way. You, I mean, so I'm going to tell you what I do. And by the way, listen, like I had to do this. I would go to an event and there would be like five or 600 people afterwards that want to talk to you. And I'm like, I got to talk to these people. Like, I got to say hi to them. I got to take a picture of them. And I did it. But what I learned is it's impossible. You can't do it. And it, it makes me mad. So my team had to start just fucking throwing me out of there because it breaks my heart because I can't, because I want to, but that's why I create training events. That's why I have people come out. Like we set up stuff for that. I can't, 
because I do like you just can't do it. So my point is, is that my team basically helps protect me. Does that make sense? Um, and and because because what I want to do is go talk to every one of them. I want to hear their story. I want to hear their change. I want to see what I got to do. And I want to do all this. And there, it takes two days. Like it can't happen. And that's what was happening. My wife's like, dude, we can't be here for 24 hours. Like you have to get out of here. So I would just tell everybody, go through a season of saying no. Surround yourself with some good buddies. Okay. Tell yourself the truth. I was just telling him, I'm going to call him out. You better get a fucking six pack and get in shape. Yeah. We're calling him out on this podcast. You hear me? Yeah. yeah. We're pulling him out. We're calling him out because that's the goal. The goal is you guys need to hold each other to this high standard. And that's what good friends do. And by the way, when he is that way, which he'll be soon, he'll be so fucking happy, man. He'll be like, you, he'll be like, you dicks. You let me run like this for fucking too long, assholes. You know what I mean? But it'll take it'll take a hundred days for him to get to this new mind. But then, dude, he'll be like, "What the? Fuck? I can't believe this shit." And and you'll all understand and know. But I would just tell everybody: do the work that no one else will do. Make sure that like literally you stay in love with this. And by the way, most people will quit somewhere along the way. So continue to out self develop them. Continue to outwork them. And and then I want to say this: have the courage to walk away from something that honestly you don't want to do. Don't be doing something that you don't want to do for money if you really fucking hate it. Go find something, restart kind of like how I did, and then become really good at it. Okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? You're working out every day, you're not making any money, but you're learning how to recreate, you're learning a new skill. Dude, you're just gonna fucking recreate yourself and in a year you'll have it all back in 10 times more and you'll be happier. Imagine if you don't do it. Like, dude, Bradley, and I'll, I'll go to this real quick, but he was broke, and he was, he was homeless, and he was sleeping on the beach and uh, when he was starting his light speed program. And I go, Brad, what was it like being homeless? He goes, it wasn't that bad. He goes, dude, you take showers on the beach, sleep with girls, and party on the beach. He wasn't that, really wasn't that bad. He goes, I'm going to be honest with you. That's why I say, like, it's really not that bad being broke. What's being bad is not being who you want, who, 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 who you don't want to be. So if you're not who you don't want to, if you don't, if you're like, if I want to be this person, but I'm that person, money, like say bye to that life and go, go build a new life. And I think you guys need to tell people that like, it's okay to can just start over. But where do you start? You start in the gym. You start self-developing. You start getting yourself out there. You start learning how to sell. You start learning how to be a leader. And if you're broke, it's all on fucking YouTube. Watch all shit until you throw up. And then that's it. And then, dude, in a year, you'll look up and you won't even remember any of that happened. And, but thank God you had the courage to change because if you didn't, well, dude, like, you're, I mean, imagine living the same life 75 fucking years. Like, dude, my wife, she, she'll tell you, she's like, since my husband was 39, I married one man. From when, from when I was 24 and I married my wife to 39, she married one man, which was me, this same person. At 39, when she picked me off, Every day she's married a new man again every motherfucking day since she pissed me off. Every day she's like, you son of a bitch, man. You're crazy You're every day. I want to tell you this. Like, could you imagine marrying the same person? They never changed. Or imagine being the same person. Dude, listen, you guys, the second you guys stop growing around each other, you're going to go find somebody else to hang out with. So you guys got to keep doing that. And so I just want to tell anybody out there, if they want to get what they want, like go into a self-development journey. Go physical, mental business, and you'll kill it. And then before too long, which is totally crazy, people will be asking you how you did it. And then you'll be given, you'll be a coach. Which really, at the end of the day, I think the end game needs to be everybody to fuck up their industries and go kill it and be, get really good and do what it is that they said they were going to do so they can be a, prove, a proven person to go do it. And then let's go coach some other people to do it. You know what I mean? Like do it, go make some money, and go be a coach. I think we're in an era where we need more coaches. But we don't need, we need real fucking coaches, which means you do have to do it first. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Beautiful podcast. Seriously. Well, guys, that's a wrap on today's episode. Be sure to like and subscribe for amazing content coming soon. Andy, thank you so much for having us out to the place. And where can everybody find you at? Yeah, so if you just go on Instagram, check me out, official Andy Elliott. It's easy. Or you can go to YouTube, Andy Elliott. I mean, we got a channel. We're about like 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. You know, it takes a minute to build that channel up. Um, but you know, Instagram official Andy Elliott. I mean, if you want to just can see some crazy shit, you know, like come check us out, but we have a coaching program, but at the end of the day, whether you spend a dollar with us or not, the cool thing about social media is you can see how people are living, see what they're doing, what they got going on. Like, dude, just dive into it. Check it out, man. I promise you'll be inspired to go build you a better life. Just
Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. I'm